Hey, do. Hello, sir. Hi. Hello, sir. And I'm diving in with my question. Yes, sir. The one question. Overall, because you had said it, I think it was at WonderCon, that you thought you wanted the renewal because you thought Fringe was this close to becoming the greatest science fiction show ever. What I want, he did, those were his words. Uh, but what I'm curious also about, as a piece of television, what do you feel has been Fringe's accomplishment? As a piece of, it's, as, as its greatest accomplishment as a show, as a piece of drama? Yeah, okay. Um, without question, it's been the nature of the relationship between the principal characters that, that it, it's, it's, it's gone on this amazing path through the world of alternate science and all the universes and so forth. But the one thing that I think we do differently is we have these intense relationships. And certainly the, the, the big surprise to everyone was the relationship between Walter and Peter, particularly early in Peter. And then the devastation when that went away and now what we want to do is to get back again. I know that that resonated with audience probably more than anything else. The, the, this desperate love affair between Peter and Lydia. <laughs> Just, oh God, you know, it's so sad. And, and yet you can't understand how hard it is for them. That they want and they can't because of their personality and their inhibitions. That's a great love story. So you have that, you have these incredible friendships. And I mean, I, I, for example, the friendship that my character has with Aspen. It's so beautiful, and we're also really good friends, and it's easy to play. The respect that you know I might have for Broads, it's these are really rich uh, interrelationships. I, that's what makes Fringe different from other shows. How does it feel to see the end in sight? Well, it feels great because I've given us a chance to finish it. <laughs> you know, seriously. So we can walk away, hopefully. We can walk away having completed the grand story, but also as an actor, saying, I've just done the greatest thing of all time. I've just had a character that I was able to resolve and play for five years. It's sort of like doing an epic play <laughs> that lasts for five years. Uh, that's also rare to, to have a character that doesn't become two-dimensional and then can stay in one place. I, I'll be, I'll feel like a very, when and if we achieve what we want to achieve, and we're going to have to work really hard to do it, then I'll be really satisfied. John, you, you've mentioned that in several interviews that, that you want, you really wanted this fifth season because you wanted to resolve the character of Walter. You know, in your mind, how would you, you know, if you were given, you know, the pen to write, write Walter's story, how would that story look for you? If a man, through his hubris and his misplaced love, his obsessiveness and his self-centeredness and his arrogance, performs an act which creates such havoc as Walter did. Um, and, and then, as a human being, suffer the, the consequences of that with his insanity and his slow, uh, his slow awakening again. And I reckon that there has to be, eventually, as he, has to, he has to pay the piper. He has to be responsible for what happened then. And we've had the things of him feeling sorry for himself. Okay, forget it. Anyone can feel sorry for themselves. But now he has to face it, look it in the eye, and do something about it. That would be a glorious character arc to take. What about the difference between uh, the Walter that we know and are familiar with and the Walter in the future who's very serious and very together and not crazy at all? Well, we don't know that yet. Well, I, I, no, no, seriously. I, I have some really hard work to do to finesse it because I don't want to play that character for 30 minutes. I don't think that that's particularly entertaining. I mean, it's a good character, but, but so that would almost make him into this really hard-ass character that doesn't care about human life, that doesn't feel great emotion affection towards me. I'm not going to go there. So I've got, I've got to find a way to return to the more loving water whilst still having that good, that, that clarity of vision. That's my task. <laughs> so you, uh, throughout the show, I mean, you've had a collection of incredible scenes and episodes and moments. For you, what was the sort of defining moment of Fringe for oh, you? Lord. <laughs> That's, I don't know I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet. I mean there's so many moments and water so complex. There are moments with Peter at times I think they showed a clip and reminded me because he's you're not my father, you know. There, there was a, a moment we did with, with, with Walter talking to God in the chapel, which was so 
rich, you know. It's so emotional to play that stuff. There were the, sh the, the scene that I loved dearly was the water waterman saying goodbye in the corridor in the last year. I think that was a huge gift to, to me as an actor. There are a lot of them, and lots, <laughs> and lots of funny ones too. But those are really deep. Uh, I'll remember those. Throughout the show, Walter has always had a lot of guilt about causing the tear in the end of the universe. So now that you close that door, is Walter able to let go of that guilt and move on? Well, well, hopefully, but. But whether that, you see, I guess the link is whether that disruption, that tear in the universe, um, made it feasible, made us vulnerable to this movement from the observers. I think that that's a feasibility. I think that's a possibility. So somehow or other, we need now to deal with the greater threat. The greater threat being, and this is this, this is a huge, it's sort of like a global threat thing we're talking about here. It's a great little time. We're, we're, we're ruining our world, you know, it's sort of, what? And we talk about it every day, don't we, through global warming and through arms um, filling up and so forth. We're ruining our world. And that's kind of what's happened. And we've made ourselves vulnerable because of carelessness to being taken over. And so now they need to find a way to bond, uh, to bond and to properly work together as a society to get back the world that they undervalued. Yes. And they will. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, looking at the entire arc of the character and, and what sort of message do you feel like Walter has to give to the world? Bear in mind that Walter started life as an old man. And I think what happens with a lot of older people that they reach a stage in their career and they they lose confidence, they lose drive, and most importantly, they lose the sense of being useful. Uh, so if you talk to successful women and men who say, I'm oh, oh, not useful anymore, and hence the depressions that come with that and that terrible deterioration that old age can be. I think water's in there. Water is says to everyone, get up and do it. You know, you've got you've got so much more to give if you and that's a really important uh, point to make actually in our society present. You are useful. You are really useful. And and it's gorgeous because the other characters treat him that way. So instead of being the silly old mad scientist, they really value his opinion as much as they he may irritate the time. So it'd be nice to go back to a world where where um, people were valued as in their senior years, as they used to be. That's a huge, and that's I know that's inspiring people because people talk to me about it. You've gotten to work with uh, Christopher Lloyd and Peter Weller. You've got to work with your daughter. Uh, yeah. Um, anyone else out there you'd like to work with? Oh, the list would be so long. <laughs> this would be so long, and and I. I d I've not heard anything about guest actors at all this year. I heard one bizarre one. How was it? Oh, someone said Robin Williams wanted to come and work with us. <laughs> you heard that too? That too? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fancy trying to hold a scene with Robin Williams. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, I <laughs> just do what Robin will follow. <laughs> There were like uh, the rumours of the movies and things like that. How would you feel I started them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Do you want to carry it on? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sort of thought I'd start that rumour. It's a good one. Yeah, no. Why not? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Come, we better get working on it. <laughs> well, why not? I mean, if, if, if uh, given the. What, the interesting thing about Fringe is it says, oh, it's a low rating show. But, but when you actually look at the number of people that watch Fringe worldwide, through all the it's massive. It's got a massive audience around the world. So as a as a film, it could in fact have an extraordinary success because it's it's huge in South America, huge in Europe, you know. So. Um, if there were a film, what timeline would you want it to be in? Uh, what, universe? what universe or timeline would you want it to be in? Or start That's a in? really good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think about that and start another rumor. <laughs> Well, perhaps we could do a franchise and do lots of them. 
Fringe 1, 2, 3, a different universe. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Fringe meets Star, we finished yet. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you, John. You have to wait for the sequel. Thank you.